morning. Uh, I, I didn't quite expect that kind of introduction. <laughs> uh, I'm at Columbia University. I'm actually, I'm, I'm retired technically, but I'm still a special lecturer in the department. And I'm uh, from here, I'm going to spend a few weeks up in New York at Columbia University. Uh, so I still have my ties, although it's true that uh, I live in Victoria. My wife and I moved there a couple of years ago, and it's a uh, very pleasant extension of the life we used to have in New York. It's, uh, so uh, I, I don't see the dividing line. I know there's a border there, but the, uh, I'm not quite like Sarah Palin that she can see Russia or Alaska. <laughs> I've called on Mr. Martin Blank to yeah, speak, well, it's his if time. I, if I can just try and say again, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't understand the way you understand the, the way these uh, issues are intertwined, but I am a citizen and I know that there are consequences to action. If you take this action, you are doing things that are going to put the public at, in potential harm. Not only potential, everyone gets harmed. Most of us get away with, with, this, with this harm because our bodies are equipped to deal with a certain amount of damage. But the fact of the matter is, it may take 10 years till one develops cancer, but if you get cancer as a result of this, I think it's important for the, for the legislators to know that they are making a decision that has these ramifications. I mean, I'm not here to, to say anything about the way uh, the lighting is going on there, but if this multi-use, it's a smart thing that you say you call it a smart poll, but it's not very smart if you're going to do things that are going to harm the citizens. I'm here with disturbing news about our favorite gadgets, cell phones, tablets, Wi-Fi, etc. Putting it bluntly, they are damaging the living cells in our bodies and killing many of us prematurely. I'm Dr. Martin Blank from the Department of Physiology and Cellular Biophysics at Columbia University. It is distressing for me and more than 160 colleagues who today are petitioning the United Nations requesting that they address this problem. We are scientists and engineers, and I am here to tell you we have created something that is harming us, and it is getting out of control. Before Edison's light bulb, there was very little electromagnetic radiation in our environment. The levels today are very many times higher than natural background levels and are growing rapidly because of all the new devices that emit this radiation. An example that a lot of us have in our pockets right now is the cell phone. One study shows that as cell phone usage has spread widely, the incidence of fatal brain cancer in younger people has more than tripled. We are putting cellular antennas on residential buildings and on top of hospitals where people are trying to get well. Wireless utility meters and cell towers are blanketing our neighborhoods with radiation. It's particularly frightening that radiation from our telecommunication and power line technology is damaging the DNA in our cells. It is clear to many biologists that this can account for the rising cancer rates. Future generations, our children, are at risk. These biologists and scientists are not being heard on the committees that set safety standards. The biological facts are being ignored and as a result, the safety limits are much too high. They are not protective. More protection will probably result from full disclosure of possible conflicts of interest between regulators and industry. Rising exposure to electromagnetic radiation is a global problem. The World Health Organization and international standard-setting bodies are not acting to protect the public's health and well-being. International exposure guidelines for electromagnetic fields must be strengthened to reflect the reality of their impact on our bodies, and in particular, on our DNA. Although we are still in the midst of a great technological transformation, the time to deal with the harmful biological and health effects is long overdue. We are really all part of a large biological experiment without our informed consent. To protect our children, ourselves, and our ecosystem, we must reduce exposure by establishing more protective guidelines. And so today, scientists from around the world are submitting an appeal to the United Nations, its member states, and the World Health Organization to provide leadership in dealing with this emerging public health crisis. Coming down to the, uh, the part of the talk that I really think is the most important, uh, which is that there are, there are data now which are quite strong that you've got damage that's occurring to DNA at virtually all levels of exposure. 
and they result in, in damage that is bad, that leads to a lot of these kinds of effects. And what's worse is that this damage is propagated through time. Uh, I ask cells how they feel about the different exposures. And when you ask them, they, they give you an unequivocal answer because there's something called a cellular stress response and they react to temperature. In fact, yeah. that was the first thing that was measured. It's called a heat shock response. And the heat shock response involves making special proteins. There are about 20 of these proteins and the cell starts to make them. And it's, uh, it's an indication that the cell has to do something to prevent, to correct the damage, to prevent further damage, things like that. Well, when you uh, apply the temperature, uh, an increase in temperature, it makes uh, stress proteins, sure enough. But it starts to make stress proteins at a much lower level of electromagnetic exposure. And that, I think, is the key that these, the people who are setting the standards are using the wrong ruler. They're not measuring the right kind of thing to tell if your cells are safe. The electromagnetic radiation standards used by the Federal Communications Commission continue to be based on thermal heating, a criterion now 30 years out of date and inapplicable today. That was just released in March. And this is one agency finally getting up and saying that these guys, they got their heads stuck somewhere and it's not in, in place where they're getting sufficient oxygen. So. <laughs> just by living nowadays in our environment, we are being exposed at a rate that's causing mutations that uh, there was a rate that was given there that amounts to about, uh, you know, I don't know, it was roughly the order of one a, one a year. So if somebody reaches the age of 60, he will have accumulated 60 mutations with, with a general environmental kind of exposure. We are electrical in nature. We are made of the same stuff as everything else. We are made of atoms, and atoms are made of electrons, which are negatively charged, protons that are positively charged, and we react to electromagnetic fields. So it's not surprising that we respond to all kinds of things. Yes. When something appears to be caused by an environmental influence, uh, one ought to figure out what it would cost to take care of it or to do something to ameliorate its effects, and how it compares to what would happen if we did nothing and we'd have to do the cleanup work afterwards. And in 2007, we published the first bioinitiative report. And that report is basically an encyclopedia or a compendium of all the science in public health that comes to bear on the issue of whether EMF and now radio frequency radiation are in fact cancer causing and are perhaps a cause of neurological diseases like Alzheimer's and cognitive problems and developmental problems in children like autism. So scientists decided it was time to counter the industry claims that there is no evidence. Now the thing is it came out and there were obviously there were a number of people who didn't like it because they said first of all it's not an authorized group. I don't know what they want in an authorized group. They want a bunch of fat cats or political characters these were scientists who were talking about the, the stuff that they're working on. The bioinitiative has been criticized and it was also considered pretty good. And one of the people who considered it pretty good was the European Parliament, who used that as a argument for saying that one ought to look at the electromagnetic safety standards. Here's a quote from Milton Zarek when he testified before Congress in 1973. There is a clear, present, and ever-increasing danger to the entire population of our country <coughs> from exposure to the entire non-ionizing portion of the EM spectrum. Most non-ionizing radiation injuries occur covertly. I think that his message was on target. No change, no edits needed for today, fine today. And I think that that is the message that I hope that I've been able to convey. Let me end here.